This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and look at the final aspects of tax. And within this chapter, those final aspects cover the regulatory environment. Uh, so, so where tax rules come from, uh, how is it administered, uh, what do we mean by tax avoidance and tax evasion. And then we just go through as well and look at international tax issues. Uh, so start to look there. Is it better to set up a branch overseas? Is it better to set up a subsidiary overseas? Is there any additional tax rules or principles that we need to consider if we're paying tax overseas and also paying tax in our domestic environment? OK, so quite a bit to go through. Uh, there's a small bit of computation at the end. Uh, but other than that, a lot of it is book work. OK, so you just love the world of taxation. OK, lots of rules, application of the rules and then reading through the legislation, understanding the terminologies. Yes. Uh, so, first of all, uh, sources of tax rules, essentially, where do they go through and come from? Uh, well, the majority of the rules uh, come from your domestic legislation. OK, so in the UK, uh, our government has put together what's referred to as the Finance Act. And the Finance Act goes through and, and gets updated every single year. Uh, and that will include all the rules about what we've seen with regards to companies' income tax. Uh, the capital gains that companies make and also going through as well and looking at updates to if you like the, the, the tax on your on your own employment so the income that you generate there uh, uh, as well okay so the, the main source of tax rules is from your government uh, however the, the tax authorities that uh, develop a, a code of practice don't they and that will then therefore mean that they need to issue guidelines and interpretations which help clarify some of the rules, uh, particularly when, when things get updated. You know, businesses progress, businesses develop. So therefore, the tax rules need to develop on an annual basis to, to match with how the businesses are developing and ensure that the, the correct amount of tax is applied and that the correct amount of tax is collected. But as things change from a tax perspective, guidelines and interpretations are required to ensure that no mistakes are made. OK, so that also is a source of tax rules. Also, as well, uh, supranational bodies. Wow. They're not super, supra, uh, supranational bodies. Uh, so the UK at this moment is a member of the EU. Uh, how that transpires. Only time will tell. By the time you watch this video, the decision will have been made. Uh, but whatever happens at this moment in time, as I talk, the UK is a member of the EU. Okay, And again, the EU will also be a source of tax rules. And they have quite a lot of say, if you like, to do with VAT. So that VAT is consistent across all EU member states. Because if it is, it makes your, your tax rules on VAT, sales tax, much more simple and easy to administer, doesn't it? OK, uh, likewise as well, uh, international tax treaties. So maybe if the UK votes to, to leave the EU, then that will then become an, an international tax treaty that we may decide to adopt. OK, but there are I am no uh, tax treaties between the UK and the US, the UK and, and Canada, etc. about who taxes the profit of a particular global entity depending upon where it is based. And also, if it is taxed twice, how do we go through there and give any relief from that double tax that has been paid? OK, so essentially there's there's four, if you like, sources of tax rules, your domestic legislation, uh, the practice that is adopted that gives rise to guidelines, interpretations, uh, supranational bodies and your international tax treaties. OK, uh, next bit. I don't want to spend too long upon it. Uh, it will send you to sleep, uh, is the administration of tax. OK, uh, so you need to maintain your records for everything to do with tax. OK, corporate tax. So that's there, your income tax, VAT sales tax. So we're talking about uh, purchase invoices, sales invoices, payments made, uh, cash received. If you're thinking about your sales tax and your your output VAT that you've received, uh, likewise excise duties and employee taxes. So in the UK, our employee tax is usually referred to as PAYE and NI. Uh, so PAYE is pay as you earn, 
uh, and NI is your national insurance, okay? Uh, both of those are deducted at source, if you like. Uh, you don't have to go through there and, and, and take the, the full amount of your salary or your wage and then pay the tax to the government. It's taken directly from uh, your income, okay? Uh, if we go through there and look at the, the, the specifics, uh, you know, again, I, I don't think it's too exciting. Uh, corporate income tax, a business must keep all records required to support its financial statements. So the auditors will go through and inspect those financial statements and expect as well those records to be kept. That's why the responsibilities of the directors, isn't it? Uh, and all records to support adjustments made to the financial statements for tax purposes. Okay. Uh, so if we're looking at tax depreciation, you need to make sure there that you have the evidence of the purchase of that asset so that the tax depreciation can then be applied for it. Okay, that's it. as simple as that. Uh, sales tax, again, you need to keep adequate records there. Uh, I think we spoke about it before. Purchase invoices, sales invoices, cash receipts, cash payments. So again, if you maintain proper accounting records, then that should, if you like, go through and support the records that are appropriate for your sales tax there, isn't it? Okay. Uh, likewise, excise duties, uh, you need to go through there and maintain your records relating to the excise duty. And also, if relevant, anything to do with your transfer pricing, uh, if you sell goods between two parties. Uh, likewise, employee taxes and social security. Okay, You need to keep records of, of the amounts that you have paid to the government and the deductions that you have made from your employees. I think there may be more detail to that uh, in your textbook. By all means, feel free to have a read. But, yeah, yeah, there's not going to be much on that within the exam. Okay. Uh, deadlines and penalties. Uh, again, why do we have deadlines? Why do we have penalties? Uh, well, deadlines are set there, aren't they, to ensure the taxpayer submits the returns and pay on time. The governments do budgets as well. They budget the income that they get from tax so that they can then budget the expenditure that they make. You know, if you don't set deadlines for, for people to go through there and pay, then they may never pay on time. And therefore, you won't have the money that you require to invest in the, the infrastructure that you were expected to do. Uh, if you are still going to invest in it, you'll have to borrow. And if you borrow, that will cost money, won't it? That's therefore then why we set penalties to, to ensure that people do pay on time. And if they don't, they are punished for it. OK, uh, in terms of the collection, just be careful. There are two different ways of doing it. Uh, one is referred to as self-assessment. So what happens there is that the entity prepares the tax return. Uh, and what goes through and happens there is that they pay the tax that they think is due. OK. Uh, so the business will go through there and prepare their tax return. And what goes through and happens then is that they will pay the tax that they think is due. Again, the government, the tax authorities will adjust it if they see that there are any errors. OK, uh, what may happen uh, in other jurisdictions is that the tax authorities raise the assessment. So instead of the individual or the company doing it, uh, the tax authority will, will say how much you have to pay uh, with regards to tax once you've submitted the information to them. OK, so you submit the information to the tax authorities. They calculate the tax and they tell you how much to pay. So effectively, that ensures that there are no errors. But again, even with self-assessment, there may be small errors, but they're not significant because you will normally go through an accountant, a tax advisor to ensure that your tax bill that you think is due is correct. OK, uh, the powers of the tax authorities again. Uh, oh, geez. Learn it. Again, it's a bit dull, isn't it? A bit tedious, but know what the tax authorities can do. OK, uh, they can review and query uh, the returns. Uh, so if you've submitted your return, they can inspect it and say, well, that doesn't look particularly right and go back to the documents that you should be keeping. Uh, they can request special reports or returns. Uh, so if they are particularly unhappy with the amount of tax that you are paying. They can go through there and ask you to do special requests for them. Uh, they can go through there and examine the records. Uh, they can enter and search your property. 
and they can exchange information with your foreign tax authorities. OK, just note one of the powers that they do not have is the power to arrest. OK, the tax authorities can pass that information on uh, to the police and then the police can deal with that subsequently. You do not have the power as a tax authority to go in and arrest somebody. It would be good fun if it, you did, wouldn't it? But uh, we do not. OK, so again, just bits and pieces there in terms of the powers of the tax authorities. Again, it's one of those, I suppose, potential objective test questions, isn't it, for, to select all. OK, select all of the following, which are powers of the tax authorities. OK, if you've learned them, great. If not, you should have spent a little bit more time working through the material and practicing the question, shouldn't you? OK, harsh, but fair. You know, if you've got to hear a second to last session and you haven't practiced any questions, what are you doing? Yeah, you're wasting your time. Get into that question bank, start practicing the questions and get your way through them. OK, that's the way to revise. Practice, practice, practice. OK, uh, tax evasion, tax avoidance. Anybody know the difference? Mm, so I've heard about it on the television and the news and stuff. Uh, what you've got there, tax evasion, is the illegal manipulation of your tax bill. OK. Uh, so you might be going through there and making a false claim by saying, well, I've incurred expenditure that is disallowable uh, when maybe you haven't incurred the expenditure or maybe you've claimed an incorrect amount. OK, so you are evading the payment of tax, which is entirely illegal. OK, avoidance is legal and it's a way to reduce your tax bill by a careful tax planning so maybe with the use of losses, uh, maybe with the use of transfer pricing. And although it is legal, it does bring around ethical issues, doesn't it? About how much is a business prepared to exploit the loopholes in the tax legislation to reduce the tax liability? OK, it's been very topical. I think further down the page, it mentions some, some large multinational companies that have been subject to if you like people not being happy with the amount of tax that they pay based upon the profits that they generate in the uk so google starbucks uh, I think amazon facebook they make billions of pounds worth of profit every year but through clever tax planning with the use of transfer pricing and with the use of overseas subsidiaries they can reduce their tax bill to, to oof, Virtually zero. OK, uh, have a look on the Internet and, and, and look at it in the world of tax avoidance with your large multinational companies. You'll, you'll find some really good articles within there. OK, uh, so the problem that we have is that we have aggressive tax avoidance, so to speak. Uh, you know, the, the, these large multinational companies go to extreme lengths to exploit the loopholes. OK, employ really high powered technical tax advisors to help them reduce that tax liability and that causes problems for the government not just from a, a viewpoint of ethics but also from from a, a funding point of view from the government okay uh, because if they don't get the money in from these large multinational companies where is the money going to come from okay you or i they have to start taxing individuals or smaller companies end up paying the burden of tax that bit more don't they uh, so what in, they are going to do to try and minimise evasion and also, if you like, uh, the, the avoidance that we've just mentioned, uh, try to go through there and reduce the opportunity by deducting your tax at source. OK, so making sure there that the, the companies don't have the option to do self-assessment, but that's going to be very difficult because then that passes the burden on to tax authorities doesn't tip so it's a nice idea but very difficult to work in practice maybe what we could do there is simplify the tax structure the more simple it is the less loopholes i suppose there are the more complex you make it that gives you more scope to try and be creative with how you utilize your tax losses uh, you could go through there uh, and audit the tax returns and payments but again that just makes it a little bit more uh, costly but at least if the submission of your return and you know it's going to be audited that might then prevent you either putting in illegal claims and evading tax or trying to manipulate uh, your tax liability through tax planning and avoidance 
Uh, what you could go through and do there is you could regularly review the penalty structure. If you think people are being too aggressive or there's too much illegal manipulation going on, maybe increase the fines uh, to prevent people from doing it. But again, uh, that could then be costly if you have disagreement with the company uh, over their tax avoidance planning scheme. OK, again, we don't want to go through there and go through the court process, have to pay that money. And then ultimately, what happens if we lose? OK, that could, could cause you quite a lot of discern in the future couldn't it when, when all the other companies now follow what that original company has done because it has now been determined in a court of law there's nothing wrong with it okay uh, and i think that the most important one is, is the one at the bottom okay is changing your social attitudes trying to make these corporations and individuals a bit more responsible uh, and taking on some sort of, of moral beliefs that, that, that you are there you know you should be paying tax to try and help the economy, yeah, to try and help those less fortunate and needy to, to, to give them chance in life and to, to help people out. OK, by reducing your tax bill. OK, it might be legal and it's going to save you money, but, you know, you're saving money to do what? Buy yourself a new Ferrari. OK, buy yourself another luxury yacht. OK, well, wh why don't you just decide not to have a luxury yacht and another Ferrari? You already got one of each already uh, and go through there. Uh, and contribute more to society through, through your, your tax payments okay uh, and bring about if you like some more of some ethical issues around it okay if you can change the social attitudes that's going to go through there and have a big impact isn't it on the ability of your your tax authorities to, to collect the tax and again it brings in ethics but you know it's a, it's a touchy subject ethics isn't it okay particularly with regards to tax because if you're reducing your tax liability uh, and you're using you know, methods of, of tax avoidance, it is purely legal. So if you are doing something that is legal, is there anything wrong in doing that? OK. Technically, no, you are operating within the letter of the law, aren't you? OK, so you are op or you are operating in an ethically correct manner. But then people will then argue well, look, it might be legal, but, but you're pushing the boundaries of legality, aren't you? OK, and that then brings into to question the ethical considerations. Some people will argue as well that even though these large multinational companies don't pay as much tax as what people perceive that they should do. You know, at the end of the day, everything they are doing is legal. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just maybe a bit aggressive in terms of how they're manipulating loopholes. But even though they're paying less with regards to, say, income tax, they are creating jobs and through creating jobs, they are creating wealth. And as wealth is created through employees, the employees pay tax. Uh, if they're buying and selling goods as a company, then people are paying sales tax. So, so tax is being created elsewhere within the economy. OK, so. You know, is it unethical because tax is being created elsewhere? It's it's your choice. OK, I'm not going to go through it and talk about my beliefs Okay, and what I think is right and what I think is wrong. Uh, but that's a topic for you to go through there and discuss. You can discuss it with your study buddy if you so wish. If you've created a study buddy there at Open Tuition, uh, then great. You know, you can get talking about it even on the, the discussion forum. OK, uh, but just bear in mind, ethical considerations is something to go through and think about.